Both Volkswagen and Tesla actually make their own motors for their electric cars. Now, a YouTuber has taken apart a new Tesla Model Y, weighed the motor, so we can actually look at the difference between Volkswagen's electric motor and Tesla's. Now, he didn't do that, but I'm gonna do that because we can see what the specs are now, what the weights are, what the power is, and actually, there's quite a difference between the two of them. Hello, my friends, welcome to the channel. Great to see you, thanks for tuning in. My name's Sam Evans and I'm coming to you from Bangkok in Thailand. We started this channel, I believe it was around 23 months ago. And since then we've made nearly 2,900 videos. So make sure you stay subscribed because we have electric car videos every single day of the week. Around about five to seven videos depending on the day. Now, if you wanna see some of those in advance, you can become a member of the channel. I'll put a link in the description. And if you want to be a Patreon, that would be amazing too. I'll put a link in the description as well. Volkswagen, from this year onwards, they say this year they will produce 1.4 million electric motors. That's that's quite a lot, 1.4 million. That should enable them to reduce the price, make more, cost is less. So are they actually good? Well, they're not bad. I haven't heard anything bad about them. I've Googled, I've looked at forums. It seems as though there's very few failures. But what about the weight? We all know Volkswagen's EVs are very heavy, but that's mostly because of the platform, the MEB platform. It's made for lots of different cars. And honestly, it's, it's definitely letting the car down in terms of the weight. It's adding several hundred pounds, at least to the car's overall weight. Does the motor contribute to that weight? Actually, not really. I mean, yeah, it weighs something, but not a lot. Most Volkswagen cars are just rear wheel drive or front wheel drive, primarily front wheel drive. So this single motor that Volkswagen use in most of their EVs has around about 150 kilowatt and 310 newton meters of torque. So that 150 kilowatt motor, that's 201 horsepower, Americans. And the whole drive unit together with its one speed gearbox is compact enough to fit in a sports bag. Massive advantage over a gasoline powered car, like an internal combustion engine. They are usually around three times the weight or more. And of course, you could not possibly fit one in a sports bag. So what do they actually weigh? Volkswagen's drive weighs 90 kilos, around about 200 pounds. Now this is the same motor they use in the ID3, the ID4, the ID5, Maybe they'll use it in the ID2 as well. I'm not sure. Now, interestingly, that weight is a very, very similar, remarkably similar to Tesla's electric motor. The Model Y motor uses an all new design for the inverter that's much more compact than before and has an all new chiller assembly. The total weight of the motor is 88 kilograms. So it's around two kilograms lighter than the Volkswagen ID series motor. And that means it's about 194 pounds. So really there's not a lot between them, around about five pounds in weight. But there are some big differences. One of those is horsepower. The ID3, 150 kilowatt, 201 horsepower. The Tesla Model Y motor is capable of different specifications, but in its more powerful specification, which weighs the same, it can put out 384 horsepower and 376 pound feet of torque. So it has around 600 Newton meters and 384 horsepower, meaning nearly double the power of Volkswagen's ID motors. So it weighs five pounds less, has the capacity for nearly double the power. Now Motor Trend have tested the Model Y long range and they've actually managed to do 4.1 seconds for a zero to 62 mile an hour sprint. Aussies, everyone else, that's zero to 100 kilometers an hour. That's fast, that's incredibly fast. So Tesla's claim that it has 384 horsepower is actually not from Tesla. That's from it being tested independently. Tesla doesn't actually put those figures out. When you buy the car, it doesn't say on the website, we have 384 horsepower, but we know it does. That's a lot more horsepower than the ID motor. So one of the things this YouTuber noticed when he tore apart his Tesla Model Y was that Tesla has refined and improved the design of the unit that's being fitted to the rear axle of the current Model Y. Overall, the layout is the same as with the previous iteration, but it's been optimized in a lot of areas to make it easier to manufacture 
and prolong its life whilst being a little bit lighter than the previous version. Plus, it has more power and better efficiency. Now, he says there is one potential problem though with this design, and that's the cartridge oil filter is no longer user serviceable. But as he puts it, it should easily last the whole lifetime of the vehicle without needing to replace it. Now I wanna point out the cartridge oil filter in your Tesla. It is definitely different to the oil filters in other vehicles. It's sealed completely. So you can't, or I should say, more importantly, you don't need to service it. The BYD that I bought, you do need to service it. They say you need to service it, I believe it was about every 150,000 kilometers. It might've been less than that. Approximately that number though from memory from when I bought my car. Is that a good thing? I don't think it is. I think if you need to service it, that's just something else that you need to pay for that could fail. Tesla oil filters now, because they're sealed, Tesla says you never need to touch them. And that means there are Tesla Model 3s using this design that have done well over 500,000 kilometers where that oil filter has never been touched. I don't see that as a problem. I see that as a good thing. I see that as a design factor that other companies should probably copy, if anything. Now, a smart update is the breather has apparently been moved to the top of the casing. So if water ever gets to the drive unit, it can't go inside the gearbox unless it goes over the breather. After opening up the casing, there's a lot of similarities with the previous model, with the same basic resolver design and the same basic design of the rotor itself. But Inside EV says there is something new inside, and that's the hairpin style stator, which is more efficient than before and much easier to manufacture. A lot of what Tesla does now is really kind of centered around reducing costs, improving efficiency, and also making the parts lighter and cheaper to manufacture. They're really the four things that Tesla are focusing on. The housing itself is more elegant with fewer ribs and less material used overall, meaning they can reduce the weight, and it effectively leads to lower production costs. Now the newer inverter, they say, has a much more compact printed circuit board, PCB, but uses much of the same components as before with the same digital signal processor or DSP and the same gate drivers, but there is a new addition in the form of an unidentified safety controller, which could be Tesla's own silicon. Now Tesla has switched from thermistors to infrared sensors to measure the temperature. And it seems that the board was designed to house three IR units, but it has two in place. My main takeaway from this video is that electric motors are amazing. If you have a look at the power of electric motors, have a look at the power of some of the newer, smaller electric motors we're seeing from other companies that they're making as well. I'll put a link in the description below to the new electric motors, the small motors being made for smaller cars and of course for Mercedes EVs. You need to check out that video. You'd be amazed by some of the technology in these motors. It's continuing to get better. Think about it this way, right? If you want to have a look at some of the, many of the diesel engines on the market that have say 130, 140, 150 horsepower, maximum around 200 horsepower, they weigh 350 kilos or about 750 pounds. If you think about it, that's the weight of four Tesla Model Y motors. You could have a quad motor vehicle that would have the same weight in actual motors versus a very low powered diesel engine. That's one of the big advantages of an EV as well. The simplicity of these motors, they're much less likely to fail than an internal combustion engine motor. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching.